Hello everyone, Gary Smith here. I'm going to show you eight ways in which you can improve the Salesforce Lightning layout. These will help your teams use Salesforce more effectively and more quickly and generally improve the user experience. So here's the first. It's really simple. It's this. By default, when you view an opportunity in Lightning, you land on the Activities tab. That's what happens by default. But Here's what most people then do. They immediately click on the Details tab. That's because they either want to update the opportunity or they want to see the key information before taking any further action. So, make it easy for them. Change the Default tab from Activity to Details. That way, whenever you arrive at an opportunity, the first thing you see are the details. In fact, I do recommend making the Details tab the default setting for every type of record in Lightning. Oh, and while you're at it, make the order of the tabs the same on all records. Make them consistent. For example, Activities, Chatter, Details. The order doesn't really matter. Just make it consistent across all types of record. Here's the second tip. It's to do with related records. Put the related list quick links on the right hand side of the page and the related records below that. That way, salespeople can see many of the related records on the same page as the details and they can quickly drill down to records they're interested in. Incidentally, now that we have the related records in the right hand pane, you can tidy things up by removing the Related tab. Here's tip number three. Modify the Highlights panel. That's this section at the top of the page. By default, on Opportunities, the Highlight panel contains the account name, the close date, the amount, and the opportunity owner. That's all fine, but you can remove some of these if you wish. You can have up to six fields in the Highlights panel. In this example, we've added two pipeline quality metrics, the number of times the close date has moved from one month to the next, and the number of days since the last stage change. Both important fields for pipeline quality management. In your case, add the fields that will be valuable to your users. Here's tip number four. It's a quickie. A Lightning app allows Salesforce users to see different combinations of tabs. The matrix of nine dots at the left-hand end of the tabs is where you select the relevant Lightning app. But as you can see, by default, it's pretty crowded and the most important apps aren't necessarily at the top. So make life easier for your teams. Tidy up the app menu, remove apps that aren't relevant, and move the important ones to the top. You can also add a logo to each app to help people differentiate between them. Let's talk about products for tip number five, specifically how you add products to opportunities. Here's the standard way. Click Add Products. But it's not particularly easy. Frustratingly, products that you've added previously get in the way and it's difficult to get a view of all available products. The, the box simply isn't big enough. An alternative, and much simpler than a CPQ system, is the GSP product wizard. When we open the wizard, the products are presented in a logical grouping, in this case by product family. You can adjust that if you need to. Salespeople can view the products within each category and select what they need. The running total of all products on the opportunity appears in the bottom right. Click Finish and the products are added to the opportunity in the normal way. That's a very quick overview of the product wizard. There's a number of other features. Just get in touch with us if you'd like to learn more. The next tip is also to do with management information, specifically tracking sales performance against target. Here's the tip. Decide whether the quarterly performance chart on the homepage is right for your business. 
This is a new feature introduced with Lightning. It allows individual salespeople to enter their quarterly target or quota. And the chart plots the value of all one and pipeline opportunities with a probability greater than 70% and compares this with the quota. So it's a useful feature. It comes as standard and it's easy to set up. The downside is that it still doesn't really give that much good quality visibility of sales performance versus target. Another option is to use the forecast tab. I do think that many businesses struggle with this. It's relatively complex to use and to do well requires quite a bit of effort from salespeople and managers to set the forecast accurately. The other option, and one used by many of our customers, is to use the GSP Target Tracker. You can find much more information about this on our website, but in brief, it automatically links opportunities with the relevant salesperson target. It gives detailed, robust visibility of the one and pipeline opportunities compared to the target, and has a comprehensive dashboard. That's a very brief overview. Search for GSP Target Tracker in Google or visit the apps page on our website for much more information. Here's our next topic, reports and dashboards. You need to build your lightning reports differently from the way you probably do it in Classic. And if you're switching from Classic to lightning, you might need to make some adjustments. Here's what I mean. This is my favorite pipeline dashboard chart in Classic. It shows the pipeline by close date and stage. When I drill down to the report, I get a nicely structured report with dates across the top and the stage grouping down the side. That's how classic reports tend to be structured, usually dates across the top. Now, let's have a look at the very same dashboard chart in Lightning. Here's the dashboard chart. But when we click down, the report in the chart is much less useful. It's grouping the opportunities differently and in a less useful way. That's because Lightning prefers the dates down the side of the report rather than across the top. If we adjust the report that way, we go back to the original, a much more useful chart. Incidentally, remember, we have a free Lightning dashboard that contains this chart and many others, plus pipeline quality metrics. Search for GSP Sales Dashboard on the App Exchange. Here's the final tip. Tip eight, it's this. Avoid ambiguity of the use of notes. Let me show you what I mean. Notes is a feature unique to Lightning. Here are two examples I've created of notes on an opportunity. You can see that notes can be used for entering details about meetings or phone calls, or for storing more generic information about an account, opportunity, or other record. But be careful. In my experience, there can be ambiguity with salespeople over where to store certain information. For example, I'd say in general, information on interactions with customers and prospects should generally be stored as an activity. And chatter is a good way to store general information, partly because it's easy to share with other people. And it's also a natural place to look for information when you first arrive on a record. If you do store information in a combination of different places, including notes, then make sure you remove any ambiguity about what information should be stored where. So there you have our eight lightning tips that will please salespeople. This is one of many blog posts about maximizing your sales force benefits. Don't forget, Check them all out at garysmithpartnership.com forward slash blog. Or, of course, get in touch via our Contact Us page. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.